the world's fairs were dazzling showcases of human creativity and ambition. But why do so many of their iconic structures fade into obscurity? This is the untold story of the demise of the world's fair structures. From the Eiffel Tower in Paris to the White City of Chicago, world's fairs have given us some of the most extraordinary architectural feats in history. But did you know that most of these structures were never meant to last? Take the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, for instance. Its iconic buildings were constructed from temporary materials like plaster and wood, designed to dazzle for just six months. After the fair, most were dismantled or destroyed by fire. Yet one structure, the Palace of Fine Arts, was rebuilt to house what we now know as the Field Museum. Another example is the Crystal Palace, from the 1851 Great Exhibition in London. This engineering marvel of glass and iron was dismantled and relocated after the fair, but met a tragic end when it was destroyed by fire years later. From these early examples, it's clear that while some structures were built to captivate, they were never intended to endure, yet their legacy continues in other ways. Fast forward to 1964 and the New York World's Fair offered a vision of the future. Iconic structures like the Unisphere remain as symbols of that vision, but many others weren't so lucky. The New York State Pavilion, once a marvel of design, now sits as a neglected relic. Despite preservation efforts, its fate remains uncertain. A common story for World's Fair structures worldwide. This isn't just a US phenomenon, from Expo 67 in Montreal to Expo 2010 in Shanghai, fairgrounds across the globe face similar challenges. While some structures, like the Eiffel Tower, find new life as landmarks, most are dismantled to make way for modern developments. Take Expo 2010 in Shanghai, where the iconic China Pavilion, with its inverted pyramid design, was transformed into a permanent museum. Meanwhile, other pavilions like the rooftop oasis of the Saudi Arabia Pavilion, were dismantled shortly after the expo ended. Expo 92 in Seville featured groundbreaking designs like the solar-powered cooling towers of the Spanish Pavilion. Some of the fairgrounds were repurposed into a technology park, but others were left to deteriorate over time. These transformations show how the fate of World's Fair structures often reflects the economic and cultural priorities of their time. But do we still have World's Fairs today? The answer is yes, though they are now officially known as expos and take place less frequently. As times changed, so did the vision of these events. Modern expos focus on themes like sustainability, innovation, and global collaboration, reflecting the priorities of our time. To understand this evolution, it's important to note that the term World's Fair traditionally referred to large-scale events showcasing cultural and industrial achievements, popular from the mid-19th to the mid-20th centuries. However, in 1928, the Bureau International des Expositions, BIE, was established to regulate and standardize these exhibitions. Today, these events are called expos and are categorized into two main types, World Expos, International Registered Exhibitions. These occur every five years and can last up to six months, addressing universal themes with pavilions built by participating nations. And then there are specialized expos, international recognized exhibitions, held between World Expos. These focus on specific challenges or topics with shorter durations of three weeks to three months. For example, Expo 2020 in Dubai, held in 2021 due to the pandemic, showcased groundbreaking ideas and iconic structures like the Al Wasl Dome. Unlike many of their predecessors, some of these structures were designed for permanence, aligning with modern goals of sustainability and long-term use. Looking ahead, Expo 2025 in Osaka, Japan, will explore the theme designing future society for our lives, promising yet another glimpse into humanity's aspirations. 
These events continue the legacy of the World's Fairs, showcasing global innovation while adapting to contemporary challenges. World's Fairs and Expos also bring economic impacts, both positive and challenging. For instance, Expo 2010 in Shanghai drew over 73 million visitors, generating over 1 billion yuan, your 157 million in profit from admission fees and sponsorships. However, not all fairs are as successful. The 1964 New York World's Fair, despite its vision, ended with a $21.1 million loss due to financial mismanagement and lower than expected attendance. Beyond finances, these events can revitalize urban areas and boost local economies, though they can also leave behind underutilized infrastructure. The balance between success and failure often depends on careful planning and the ability to repurpose sites and structures. Beyond the fairs themselves, there are fascinating stories about the innovations they introduced. Did you know that the telephone debuted at the 1876 Philadelphia Exposition? Or that television was first unveiled to the public at the 1939 New York World's Fair? These moments of technological breakthrough forever changed our world. The engineering behind these fairs is equally remarkable. Temporary structures often push the limits of design, relying on innovative materials like prefabricated components or plaster-coated wood to create grand yet impermanent wonders. The Crystal Palace was an early example, constructed almost entirely of prefabricated glass and iron for rapid assembly. Similarly, plaster-coated wood made the White City at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair both cost-effective and visually stunning under electric lighting. Though it lacked durability, modern expos, such as Expo 2020 in Dubai, have shifted towards sustainability. The Sustainability Pavilion, Terra, featured solar panels and rainwater harvesting systems, reflecting contemporary priorities in environmental consciousness. Engineering innovation is still at the heart of these events, blending cutting-edge technology with sustainable practices. Some structures were even designed for repurposing. The Atomium in Brussels, constructed for Expo 58, was built with durability in mind and remains a prominent landmark. Similarly, the Seattle Center, created for the 1962 Century 21 Exposition, has become a thriving cultural and entertainment hub. But for every success story, there are countless forgotten gems, structures that captured imaginations for a brief moment before fading into obscurity. The fate of these structures often hinges on funding, maintenance challenges, and shifting priorities. So why does this matter? Because the World's Fairs weren't just about buildings, they were about ideas. Each structure represented the dreams of its era, even if only for a fleeting moment. And in some ways, that's the beauty of it. These structures, though temporary, leave behind legacies of innovation, inspiration, and a glimpse of what humanity can achieve. What do you think? Should more of these icons be preserved, or is their fleeting nature part of their magic? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe for more stories of incredible builds and innovations.